medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram video. We're going to talk about whether or not you're drinking enough water. And the reason why we're going to talk about that is because of a recent study that was just published titled Middle-Aged High Normal Serum Sodium as a Risk Factor for Accelerated Biological Aging, Chronic Diseases, and Premature Mortality. A lot of people are interested in trying to remain younger, specifically biologically, since you can't do that chronologically. In other words, how is it possible that you can prevent the natural aging process? And it turns out that water may be one of those ways of doing it. And the inspiration for this study actually came from the observation that mice who have been subjected to lifelong water restriction actually had increased mortality and increased in chronic diseases. And so the question was asked, is this also seen in human beings? And one of the things that you're going to have to understand in terms of how they measured how much water was drunk is this idea of serum sodium. Serum sodium is one of the major ions in the body that regulates fluids. As you can see here in this diagram, the sodium concentration in this closed system is 140 millimoles per liter. If water leaves the system, either through sweating or rapid breathing through insensible losses that you're breathing out, you've got to realize that the sodium concentration actually will increase. Sodium concentration is a strong surrogate marker for the amount of free water that's there. The higher the concentration of sodium, the less free water is there, and then vice versa. So you can see here in our system that the sodium went from 140 to 144. Conversely, if you were to fill up that with free water, the sodium would go from 144 back down to 140 once you filled it up. Of course, you could fill it up too much as well and have the sodium actually go lower. And that can sometimes happen in chronic diseases where the body doesn't sense enough fluid, things like congestive heart failure, kidney disease, liver disease, and it's not uncommon to see low sodium concentrations there. And that's a problem, not because they're drinking too much water, but because the patient has these medical illnesses. The other problem, of course, is that you can drink too much water. And so I've got to stop here and just say very carefully that whatever you decide to do here, make sure that you follow up with your physician, especially if you have a chronic disease that requires you to restrict the amount of water because it can be dangerous, as was seen a number of years ago when a radio station had a competition to see how much water people could drink without going to the bathroom and actually a woman end up dying, water will always go to the area of highest solute concentration. It will diffuse down its concentration gradient. This is known as osmosis. Water is going to go into the brain and that's going to cause brain swelling. And that's exactly what happened, unfortunately. Sometimes you can have not enough water, but you can also have too much water. So be careful. These sorts of things are actually taught at the medical level, and I would be remiss if I didn't remind our audience here that we actually have organized videos at medcram.com that teach about hyponatremia, which is low sodium, or hypernatremia as well, in our Hyponatremia Explained Clearly series, which offers continuing medical education credits and MOC points. You can see here there's been 390 reviews with 4.9 stars out of 5. And you can read here some of the reviews from students, nurses, and physicians. We also have another course where we actually look not just at the sodium, but also the potassium, the chloride, the bicarbonate, the BUN, the creatinine, and the glucose. These are lab values that one would get back from their Chem 7. And if you at home want to learn more about the labs that you're now able to see on your chart through the computer and want to learn more about what those numbers mean, I highly recommend that you come and check out our BNP or Chem 7 results explained clearly. We also have a video on the CBC as well. And you can see here that we've gotten five out of five stars and 259 reviews from physicians, RNs, and also from students. But let's get back to our study, and that is this idea that not drinking enough water could potentially lead to chronic diseases and premature mortality. So what they did was they took a cohort of about 15,000 people aged 45 to 66, they gave them a questionnaire and a physical exam and a follow-up 25 years later. And you can see here when the visits were in 1987, and the final follow-up visits were in the early part of the 2011-2013 range, and you can see that that population aged. They excluded from this cohort anyone who had a sodium concentration outside the range of 135 to 146. Glucose had to be within normal range, and they shouldn't have been morbidly obese. 
This dropped the end number down to about 11,000. Still pretty good though, in terms of the number of people. And so remember, they looked at sodium concentration after a 12 hour fast. They also assessed for chronic disease and these biomarkers for aging, which we'll talk about, there was 15 of them that they looked at. And we'll talk about those biomarkers. Some of these are just regular labs that you can get. But notice here the range of normal sodium concentrations that you can have. And by normal, I mean where 95% of the population falls within this range. Now realize that if you have a unhealthy population, that these may not be normal numbers that you may wanna have. We'll We'll see here very shortly that is exactly the case. Again, remember 140 is kind of the one in the middle and people who have lower sodium concentrations are often people who have issues with heart disease, with liver disease, and with kidney disease. These are the diseases specifically that will cause low sodiums. Of course, there's a whole bunch of others as well and we talk about that in our lectures at medcram.com. By the way, you really can't do much in this situation about low sodium concentrations, and you will see that those lead to a pretty significant mortality. But what we're concentrating on in this lecture and in this study specifically is the primary reason why someone's sodium may be high. There are a few rare diseases that we could talk about, like Cushing's disease or like diabetes insipidus. These are, are rare, but the majority of why outpatient people's sodiums would be high is because they're not drinking enough water. And so the question is, is can we associate these high sodiums with diseases? And in fact, I will cut to the chase and just tell you right off the bat, that's exactly what they found. People with sodium concentrations of 143 or higher had a 39% increase in chronic disease and a 50% increase in the odds that their biological age is greater than their chronological age. You don't want your biological age being higher than your chronological age. In other words, let's say you're 50 years old, but we look at the biomarkers and say, well, according to this, you're 55. That would mean that you're five years older than your chronological age, and that's not a good thing. You want to actually have a biological age that's younger, that's lower than your chronological age. The other thing that they found is that people with sodium concentrations of 145, 146, in other words, greater than 144, had a 21% increased risk of premature death. That's pretty significant. Let's take a look at that graphically here. So again, we see our low sodium concentration had the highest mortality, 39.3%. Those in the middle here, 26.2, that was the lowest all-cause mortality. But then as we started to go up, as you can see here, greater than 142, greater than 144, mortality percent start to go up. Another way of looking at this is with a survival curve. Look at these low sodium concentrations. They had the lowest survival in subsequent year visits. And the ones with the best survival had the ones with the sodium concentrations that were closest to 140. As you went further and further away from 140, notice that survival started to go down. We can look at that again here, looking at our sodium groups. If we look at the reference range as being the normal sodium reference range at this unity here, we can see that as we went up in sodium concentration, we started to see an increase in the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality. And there were some covariates that also explain some of this, for instance, age being male, being black versus white in this case, and smoking seem to increase the hazard ratio. Let's take a look at those 15 biomarkers. Glucose, as you get older, glucose goes up. Normally, cholesterol, as you get older, it goes up. Hemoglobin A1C, as you get older, it goes up. Your glomerular filtration rate or your kidney function, yes, it goes down as you get older. Your FEV or forced expiratory volume goes down as you get older. Systolic blood pressure goes up as you get older. Your BUN, which we talk about in our Chem 7 lecture, goes up as you get older. Cystatin C goes up and also B2M goes up. And that is all associated with age. You can actually check these 15 markers, know where it is in the population, and you can make an estimate about how old the person is. Once you get that biological age, you can then subtract their actual age and you will get a number. If you get a positive number, that's bad. If you get a negative number, that's good. You wanna have a negative number because you want your biological age to be less than your actual age. The people here that are in better shape are the light blue. And you can see that when we look at survival over time, the people with the best survival are the blue. The people with the worst survival are the black. Pretty good validation in this cohort that looked at biological age is a associate with survival. So let's take a look at the final here on these 15 biomarkers. At any given age that you may have, that's your chronological age, 
and any given sodium concentration that you can simply look on your chemistry, you can see here clearly that as you go up from 140 to 145, there's a definite positivity of your biological age minus your actual age in years. What is that telling us? It's possible. This is only association, but it's sort of driven by that randomized control trial that we looked at at the very beginning that looked at mice being restricted led to this. So that was a intervention trial. This is not an intervention trial. This is a cohort looking at association. There is definitely a strong association between low water intake and chronic diseases and premature death. Let's see what the authors decided to say here at the end of their paper. They say, quote, in summary, our study shows that people whose fasting serum sodium exceeds 142 millimoles per liter have increased risk to be biologically older, develop chronic diseases, and die at a younger age. This threshold can be used in clinical practice to identify people at risk. Since decreased hydration is one of the main factors that elevates serum sodium, the results are consistent with the hypothesis that decreased hydration may accelerate aging. However, interventional trials are needed to prove this link, and that's because this was an associative trial and not a randomized controlled trial. Worldwide surveys find that more than 50% of people do not drink the recommended amounts of fluids. Therefore, results of our study provide additional reasons for reinforcing already existent recommendations for optimal fluid intake. A strategy was recently proposed for developing personal recommendations regarding optimal fluid intake depending on health status. I didn't actually go into what their recommendations were, but I found a number of them on the internet. You can actually look at this paper, and we'll put a link in the description below. But I found one that was pretty well studied. This was on a university website, which we'll leave a link in the description below for. For those of you who like to work in ounces, this is something that you can do on a daily basis to figure out how much water you should be drinking. And simply taking your weight in pounds, dividing it by two, and then adding, if you want to do some exercise, the number of minutes per day that you do of exercise, divide it by 30, and then multiply that by 12 to get how much you need to add to that. Let's just say you weigh 150 pounds and you do 30 minutes of exercise a day. You can see here that 150 would give you 75 plus 30 minutes of exercise divided by 30 is 1 and 1 times 12 is 12. And so you should be drinking about 87 ounces of water on a daily basis. So what about those who don't live in the United States? Let's take your weight in kilograms and let's say that you're about 70 kilograms and you also do 30 minutes of exercise a day, what would it be here? 70 is the weight in kilograms. 30 times 70 is 2100, and 12 times 30 is 360. We add those together, and we get 2460, and we divide that by 1,000, and we get 2.46 liters. But again, I caution you to make sure that you're checking this out with your physician, that you're not going to complicate an underlying condition that you might have. And I think you'll find out that water is such a wonderful health pillar. We've talked about hydrotherapy, which is the use of water outside the body. We've talked about light outside the body, which can actually penetrate inside the body. And I think this is another one of those easily scalable things to do to make sure that you are as healthy as you can be and drinking enough water is one of those things. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, join us at medcram.com. Also, by the way, check out some of our merchandise down below. We are trying to expand that and any kind of support is greatly appreciated. Thanks for joining us.